And welcome back to the Rockville campus of Montgomery College for game two of day two of the Montgomery College tip-off tournament. Michael Brown alongside my partner, Andre Anderson, and we are all set for what very well could be the best day, best game of the day and maybe the tournament. The two undefeated teams in the tournament, the uh, County College of Morris Nighthawks taking on the Paul D. Camp Hurricanes. And uh, we are just about uh, set to get underway. Um, both of these teams won yesterday. Paul Camp uh, played the second game of the day yesterday, and they knocked off Union College out of New Jersey. And then the County College of Morris played the Montgomery College men's team in the final uh, game of yesterday's uh, tournament, uh, first day of the tournament, and they knocked off the Raptors in a in a tight one. So, you know, you got to wonder a little bit, uh, Andre, about Morris. Uh, you talk about a lack of rest. They did that game last night. Did not finish until almost 10:30 at night. And here they are, uh, way less than 24 hours later, right back at it. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, like you were saying before, two undefeated teams, they know that for sure. They know their opponent is a top opponent. And one thing they're going to want to do today is win. So I know they're going to somehow, I'm a little, you know, I'm older now, so I don't know how they do it. But they're going to somehow, you know, fuse this energy back together and uh, get ready for this game. That's for sure. That's for sure. And... Uh, uh, so we shall see what happens. Uh, but uh, we had an excellent first game as uh, Frederick uh, got their first win of the season, knocking off Nova. And uh, so we're hoping for more of the same here in the second game. And as I said, we've got two undefeated teams, two high-flying teams, uh, love to run, love to push the ball, love to press. Uh, so we expect an exciting, uh, an exciting game here today. Yeah, some key players to also look out for: Paul Camp, Bob, or James Barlow, number fourteen, and uh, for Morris, uh, Hazir Lee, number four. Two very good players. Keep an eye out on them. And we're off and running. Joined us late, as I said, the Frederick women's team knocked off Nova 70 to 63. Second game of day two of the tournament. Three pointer off the mark, rebound, and a foul. Got two more games after this one. Coming up in our next game, Montgomery College women's team will take on Monroe uh, College out of New York. And then in the final game of the day, the Montgomery College men's team will take on Union College. So another full day of NJCAA basketball as part of the Raptors tip-off tournament. And there is uh, Kylan Mann. The line, he missed it. Let's set the starters for Morris. Morris is in the white. Uh, Paul Camp is in the all green. Starters for Morris. Number one, Samir Morris. Number four, Hazir Lee. Number five, Jonathan Edwards. Number tw 12, Daniel Overbier. Uh, and number 23, Henry Kazunmu. Head coach for Morris is Anthony Obrey. Starters for Paul Camp. Number zero, Kylan Moore. Number five, Kamari Harris. Number 10, Jalen Duckett. Number 13, Bobby Johnson. And number 14, James Barlow. Their head coach is Franklin Chapman. Our officials are 
Jesse Lynn, Tyler Shelley, and Jamal Richardson. And there's a putback by Barlow. Barlow was very impressive yesterday. Very athletic, bouncy, springy, grabs rebounds, has the ability to dunk the ball. Uh, great player. There for uh, for for camp. The Morris Titans. Man, no good. Barlow. Good. And we've got a body on the floor and a foul down low. Bier is on the foul line for Morris. He did a he had a he had an excellent game last night against Montgomery College. He really helped lock up uh, the number one player for the Raptors, uh, Will Chichua. Yeah, I mean he's almost like a defensive specialist out there. He has great size, athleticism as well, and he usually goes up against the uh, opposing team's best big man. So, um, and look and at him here. He picks up the loose ball and puts it in. Energy, spark. High energy player, long arms, moves very well. And he really denied Chachua the ball last night on uh, several occasions. Yeah, and Chachua is a great player. Um, oh yeah, he's, he's one of the one of the star, well, he's the focal point for the Raptors. Yeah, he's. And one of, one of the problems last night was the Raptors did not get the ball in his hands enough. There's Mann. He's off to a good start. Very athletic, strong point guard. Jordan. This is Hazir Lee, who, boy, did he get off to a great start last night. I think he made his first, like, four or five shots. Had a couple of spectacular dunks. And there was a lot of contact down low. Got a foul. And that'll put uh, Samir Jordan on the line. Boy, he was a thorn in the side of the Raptors last night, too. Up and in. the second. There's man. Wow, acrobatic shot there by Ramon Green, who is now in for Paul Day, but it, it didn't fall. Tavion McCray is also in for camp. There's a loose ball picked up by Mann. 
Turnover by Morris. Man. Oh, big block. There's the guy we were just talking about. Or Bier. It just flew in there out of nowhere to, to block that shot. Yeah, anything above his head <laughs> is going to get swatted. Boom. Man. Look at that. Great uh, camera work there by our very talented crew. They've been working very, very hard this weekend. No foul called. Or, I'm sorry, there was a foul called. As Ramon Green was fouled. Not a shooting foul. To Green underneath, blocked by Aura Bier. And no basket. Stepped on the line. I'm sorry, foul. Stop the clock. Uh, clock issue. All tied up here in the early going. by Lee, and that's a block on Lee. A lot of fouls early. The men, as opposed to the women, the men play 20-minute halves. Uh, whoever gets to, when you hit 17 fouls, you're in the one and one. You hit 10 team fouls, you're in the double bonus. Bit of chirping going on out there. Yeah. I mean, two teams that want to win, two very good teams that want to win, you know they're very uh, competitive. So. so they'd love to, both of them would love to stay undefeated, obviously. And but chirping, it, you know, is a part of the game as well. Oh, yeah. And Paz uh, Unmu was fouled there. Pick that back, turnover. Yep. Foul on Kazumu. Blocked by Or of Or of Bier. He gets it back. That's the kind of block you want. Keep it in play. Exactly. That might be his like second or third block already. I, I believe you're right. Edwards, Jordan. And despite the best efforts of uh, James Barlow, it goes in. And Morris off to an early lead. Take that back. The Hurricanes off to an early lead. And I'm being told by the truck that the scoreboard, we think the scoreboard may be wrong, but I don't see any.
Camp inbounding. A little pressure here from Morris. Again, Camp in green, Morris in white. Three-pointer, no good. Barlow muscles his way in. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Not for the faint of heart under there. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, he let, leveled Kazumu. Yeah, unless you're ready to really, like, you know, go one-on-one -on -one and catch maybe an elbow to the chest or the ribs, do not go down low. <laughs> it's dangerous down there. Brandon Rodriguez in now for uh, Morris. He, uh, he, he uh, provided some real highlights last night. Hit about four threes. Yeah. And not a one of them hit the rim. There he goes. And he has it stuffed by uh, Barlow. That ball never got six inches out of his hand before <laughs> it was smacked. Barlow is quite the presence in there. And desperation shot by Edwards at the buzzer. Came up short. Johnson inbounds it to Martin. To Mann, I'm sorry. Tylen Mann. To Johnson. Shot by Duckett is off the mark. Battle underneath, and it'll stay down at the camp end. <clears throat> Hurricane's up by one. Barlow with a turnaround, and he's fouled. So it looks like they've got Aura Bier on him, and that is quite the assignment for uh, Aura Bier. Yeah. Not an easy matchup, but he had the tough one last night. He did. He did. He did a tremendous job. So he probably told Coach, let me get him, Coach. I, I'm, yeah. You know, I'll step up to the challenge. You know, it's like Michael Jordan, when he was playing, he, he – he did not shy away from wanting to guard the toughest guy on the other team. Yeah, as much as he was an offensive player, Michael Jordan was also a very good defensive player. Oh, an excellent defensive player. Quick hands, of course, the leaping ability, the arm, the arm length. Just the basketball intelligence. And Ruiz now in for Morris, number 10, Jagger. Ruiz. I was listening to his namesake this morning on the way to the game. Oh, yeah? Oh, yes. Uh, song. Which one? I was listening to Angry oh. by the Rolling Stones. Okay. Was it uh, had to do anything with the mood you were in, or was it just... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It was complete opposite of my mood. I was singing along very happily, you know, excited to get back. Call some more basketball with my buddy Andre. There we go. Work with the very talented and extremely hardworking Montgomery College television crew. Let me tell you, folks, you have no idea what it takes to put on a basketball tournament from a television standpoint like uh, Montgomery College television has done this weekend. It's just an uh, unbelievable amount of work. And they always do it so well, so professionally, so flawlessly. I like that one right there, flawless. And uh, it's a pleasure to be asked back to, uh, to help out. Barlow misses the foul shot. Morris with the lead. Oh, there's a steal. Johnson comes up with it.
Foul on Camp, turns the ball over to Morris. Edwards, Ruiz, played quite well last night. He did. And, and that's going to be traveling as uh, Brandon Rodriguez tried to get a head start on that drive. You see that call a lot. Yeah. And if the thing is, like, if you don't pay really close attention, you're going to miss it. Well, that's what those guys in the striped shirts are out there for. Yep. Make sure they try to catch those things. And they caught with that one. They're taking that little quick step before they start their dribble. Give themselves a little bit of a momentum push. And I guarantee you, if they're playing pickup, that, that call is not made. Oh, no. You, uh, I don't think you would ever call a travel, unless it's a blatant travel in a pickup game. And if you do, let's just say your uh, you know, players on the other team aren't going to like you too much for calling a travel <laughs> in pickup. And you better be prepared to defend it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you will be hearing, once again, colorful words <laughs> in all blues, yellows, and definitely one of the worst colors of pews. Chatting, a little too much chatting going on. And the officials don't like that. And they're going to call a foul on number 23. Let's see. Oh, a little bumping. And he called a tech. Called a technical foul on Henry Kazunmu. And that's going to put uh, Jalen Duckett on the foul line. He makes the first. There was a lot of bumping under the basket, and uh, the referee decided that uh, Kazunmu had purposely bumped into uh, Kylan Mann, and I would have to agree with it. Yeah, after seeing the replay, I also uh, agree with that as well. Because at first I was like, wait, what's going on? But camera, the camera got it all. We got, we had a great view of that. Boy, right right there, right up, up close and personal, as they used to say. So Kazunmu was fouled and then retaliated by bumping into Mann and saying something at, at the same time. Yep. Uh, the, the official was right on top of it, and Jesse Lynn, and called the foul on man, the personal foul, but called the technical foul on Kasumu. Ooh, great save there by Bobby Johnson. Loose ball, here comes Edwards. Muscles it up there. There's a foul call. A lot of contact. Yeah, a lot. Anytime you go down in the paint, there's going to be contact. So both teams are already into the one and one situation. And uh, Morris is approaching the double bonus.
official over at the scoring table, getting things sorted out. More shot here for Edwards. And it's good. One point game. Man, double team. Pull up three. Ooh. That was Samaj Moore who's checked in now, number 11. He played quite a bit last night. Rebound Barlow, and it's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay camp ball, however. The ball was off Ruiz. I will say that yesterday, uh, compared to today when it comes to uh, the amount of fouls being called, is a lot different. Yeah. Yeah, they're letting them play a little more today, which I know you and I uh, appreciate. Obviously, you want to keep things under control. Of course. But there's more of a flow of the game, you know, when there's not every single tick tack foul called. Also, the players get into a slow as well. No, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, last night's final game in particular, uh, an unbelievable amount of fouls were called. You know, the old saying is in basketball, you can call a foul every time down the floor. You can, technically. Because there's going to be some contact. But is every bit of contact a foul? Well, last night it seemed that was the case. Yeah. I know neither coach was happy uh, with the way uh, the officiating went. Granted. That's almost always the case. <laughs> yep, <laughs> always. But last night seemed to be uh, particularly that way. Yeah. And actually, the third game of the day, the, the Raptors uh, game against Nova, a lot of fouls. Yeah, I can, I can bet, you know, the $1 paycheck I receive every two weeks that uh, – I don't think a coach has ever been like, you know what, all the fouls that were called on us, you're right, ref. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we deserved every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> move makes the foul shot. He'll have one more. And he makes them both. Man, pressure by Morris. Oh, there, knocks it away, but, and here they come. Wow, wow, is right, Jonathan Edwards. I, he put it, he found another gear there. Oh yeah. Whoa. Here we go, here we go, oh. Thought I was gonna have to save somebody. We almost got into the action. <laughs> As uh, Aura Bierre uh, almost landed in my partner's lap. Oh, man. That would not have ended well. No, I would have been on a medical leave from work for the rest of the year. I'd be flying solo the rest of the night. <laughs> Jeez, oh, wow. Three. Wow, that was, a, that was a three with no conscience. That was by artist. Tough bucket. Morris with the lead. There's Artis again. He has it blocked. By who else? Who uh, else? Yep. Or a Bier. I'll tell you what. Or a Bier is a sophomore. There are going to be some four year schools very interested in that young man. Oh, yeah. The one thing you can't really teach is, you know, the, the instinct ability when it comes to, uh, you know, jumping and, and, and blocking, things like that. And then also it's the effort on defense. I think 
for someone to want to be or someone that is a defensive specialist like he seems to be, that's effort and heart that he has to put in himself. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And you can't really teach that because everybody wants to go out and score 40 points. Who really wants to go and have to guard the best player on the other team? No, defense is want, it's desire, um, it's not sexy. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, you know, you get, you get a big block. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. But it's, you know, and, and coaches just love players that will sacrifice their offensive game for the, uh, for the uh, defensive end. Yeah, it shows that he's unselfish. But he, he really helps out on the offensive boards as well. So that's going to put uh, Kazunmu back on the, uh, the foul line. That's the first. <laughs> Titans up by four. Makes them both. One more team foul on camp, and uh, Morris will be shooting the double bonus for the balance of the half. The duck it. Shot from the elbow. Ooh. Good. Very soft touch. Yeah, the way. You know, I just marvel at athletes that can do that. Full speed dribble, stop and pop, and, and then it's a feathery touch. Otherwise, that thing clangs off the rim. Oh, yeah. Oprah, the, yep, he missed it. Back in for Paul Camp. He'll inbound it. Gets it to Duckett. Ahead to uh, Barlow. Back out to Duckett. Set up the offense. Ooh, that was, once again, coming right towards me. Ramon Green. This is everything. Edwards with the rebound. Zaire Carter is out there now for, and he's got the ball. Inside to Orobier, missed it. The night, it was a nice entry pass. Tough shot for Orobier. Three. Duck it for three off the iron. his body to shield himself and Edwards picks it up. Beautiful body control. Yeah, he likes attacking the basket and uh, definitely doing those like, you know, and one type of contact. Ooh. And a blocking foul. Or Bier should get an Academy Award nomination for that, <laughs> for that fall. Hey, he, he put everything into it. That's method acting, folks. Yeah, here we go with the replay. Boom. Not an incidental amount of contact there. <laughs> and he's a, you know, he's a big, strong guy, so. Oh, he is. The way he fell, you know. <laughs> he fell, and boy, he's uh, over there on the bench kind of. Yeah, he hit his head on the ground. It yeah, like. it looks like he's kind of massaging his neck. Hopefully he's all right. And actually, you know, Andre and I met a guy here last night who uh, we might just have to send him over to the uh, Morris bench. The gentleman gave us his card last night. He's a massage therapist uh, specializing in 
chakra balancing and aura cleansing. So I don't know, I'm not sure if Aura Vier needs his aura cleansed or not, but perhaps he could use a little massage therapy on the neck. I wouldn't mind some of the chakra, uh, you know, situation going on. Not too much, not too sure what that really is, but. I'm not either. But uh, all we know is this gentleman uh, provides massage therapy uh, that uses essential oils and CBD. Wow, it's very interesting. Very interesting. I really have no idea what CBD stands for. No, I, have, I have no idea. I have to ask one of you younger folks. Even younger than me? Perchance. It's too bad Dan Rankin isn't here today because yeah. Dan would know. He'd probably cite the Wikipedia entry and everything. Now, we haven't seen our friend, the massage therapist, yet today, but I, no. have, a, I have a feeling he's going to be back because he was a serious basketball fan. Oh, yeah. He was uh, marching up and down the sideline. Yep. Every call. He was making sure that the ref knew, hey, you missed this one. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. He was coaching the players. And at one point, a couple of the players were actually listening. Oh, yeah. Him. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little scary. <laughs> he was a good guy, man. Good guy. Oh, uh, he was very entertaining. Yeah, great guy. Ooh. That was a deep, deep three there by Zaire Carter. And all of a sudden, Morris has built a 10-point lead out of nowhere, seemingly. And there's uh, a, a new player in for uh, Paul Camp, number 24, Sincere Jones. He's just checked in. I'm not sure we saw him yesterday. No. Not at all. At least I don't think so, but it's possible. But I don't think so. I feel like I would remember that name. I, it, is, it is rather memorable. I think I would recall it as well. Hazard Lee is back out there for Morris, number four. And boom! Samir Jordan just buried it. Yeah, he's been hot behind the three-point line today. So Morris, all of a sudden, boy, they have jumped out to a 13-point lead. And it's been built on threes. Good look at uh, Zaire Carter there, who just buried that three. The net was still stuck from the previous three. And he still made it. And he just, boom, right through it. Kylan Moore at the line, he misses the first. And he makes the second. Just over four minutes to go in the first half. Game two of our four game second day of the Montgomery College tip off tournament. Jordan. Off the front of the rim, gets his own rebound, loses it. Foul call. And the foul is on Bobby, Ham uh, Bobby Johnson, number 13. Been a little quieter today. He had uh, an excellent game yesterday. Yeah, so they're gonna need him. Samir Jordan at the line. First one's up and good. <laughs> Makes them both. Biggest lead so far for either team 
Oh, nice little teardrop by Ramon Green. What a touch. That was pretty. Yeah, those, they seem like they're easy shots, but they're not at all. Not at all, particularly when you're, you're driving to the basket. And so, you, you know, you got a head of steam up, and you've got to finesse that ball just over the front of the rim. Yeah, and on top of that, you have the big guys down low. You know, hands are up. They're trying to swat the ball. So you're trying to get over their hands as well Yep. just to kind of drop it in the net. Yep. Not easy. Now, it really requires a soft touch and a good eye. And that's what, uh, that's what he had. Good look there at the Paul Camp bench with their uh, head coach, Franklin Chapman. First year as an NJCAA basketball program. We had no idea what to expect yesterday when they played Union. And, uh, you know, we had seen that they had started out 2-0 on the regular season. We knew that, well, okay, they beat, they had beaten one team, Richard Bland, which is a, a very, traditionally a pretty strong program. But uh, we really had no idea what to expect. Uh, very pleasantly, I hate to use the word surprise, but honestly, that's probably uh, an accurate term. Yeah, especially with them never even playing, you know, having a program before. It's not like we can go back in the archives and watch, you know, old highlights. So Right, right, right. They are from the southern part of Virginia in Suffolk County. Um, they are known as the Hurricanes, and if you know anything about that part of the country, uh, that's a very apt nickname. Soon move, boy, muscling it up. Wouldn't fall though, and he hits the deck. And we're gonna take a stroll down to the other end. Now to put Bobby Johnson on the foul line. And he misses the first. Makes the second. Moore is still up by 11. Just over three minutes to go in the first half. And that one just missed everything. Hazard Lee. Yeah, Hazard uh, Lee um, got in foul trouble early. So we haven't seen him much of this uh, first half. Right. He was a real spark plug last night. Oh, yeah. Against the Raptors. So another foul on Kasun Mu. And uh, he's getting in trouble here. That's his third. And he's going to come out. And he is going to be replaced by number 33, David Joseph. I don't believe we saw David last night. I don't think so either. David is a large presence out there. As it Lee. Jordan into Joseph, tries a little baby hook, and they're going to call goaltending on Barlow. He hit the backboard inside the cylinder. Yeah. Pretty sure you're not allowed to, you know, like move the backboard. Yeah. There it is. You can't move the backboard at all. So the ball, you know, obviously yeah. won't go in. And he knew it. He took uh, immediate responsibility. My bad, my bad. The man with the ball. 
Johnson. Back to man, nice little running teardrop down the baseline. That's a tough shot. Yeah, the baseline teardrop is even more difficult because you don't have the backboard to use at all. Exactly. Yeah, there's no margin for error. Joseph has it knocked away. Comes Green. Good block. Oof. Lots of contact. To Hazard Lee, up, no good. It'll stay down at the Morris end. So Brandon Rodriguez will inbound it out to Joseph, who almost traveled. Rodriguez. And let's see who they call that on. I'm pretty sure it's going to be on Rodriguez. And it is. Yeah, sometimes I feel like those fouls are unnecessary. No, that was, uh, you know, he's trying a little too hard yeah. to get that ball, and he didn't have the angle. Yeah, and especially when they're in the, you know, the double bonus, so it's like that little foul turns into a possible, well, he missed the first free throw, but a possible two easy free throws, not the smartest foul there. I'm looking over at the uh, Morris bench, and um, I see that uh, number 12, Daniel, or Bier, who we've talked a lot about in the first half, is now applying some kind of a, either a heat or an ice pack to his neck. Oh, you know what that means. So he might have a concussion. Well, I hope not with a concussion if it's a, uh, that would be terrible. I don't wanna, I don't wanna speculate. But again, this uh, may bring up a call for our uh, chakra therapist. Oh yeah. The essential oils, the aura cleanse. Yeah. I've never had an aura cleanse. Have you, uh, Andre? I'm trying to figure out what my aura is in the first place. Let alone cleanse it. Yeah, you got to figure that out first. I wonder if they, if there are different types of auras that you have to cleanse. That's a good point. Huh. And I, and I would assume a different cleanser for the aura. I wonder if, so is he like the all-around cleanser or... Does he have other friends who cleanse different auras? You know, I'm guessing from this card and from meeting the young man that uh, he's got every kind of aura cleanser under the sun. <laughs> so number 13, Bobby Johnson on the foul line. And he makes it. So the Hurricanes have, have cut into the lead a little bit. Uh, it was 12. It's now down to eight. A minute left in the first half. And Ooh. there's a foul by Johnson. Looked like he, and he fell awkwardly. Yeah. The shoe came off, it looks like. Ah. Oh. Kind of trying to fix it back a little bit. Yep. So he's like readjusting. Yep. yep. There we go. Duck it, throws it up there, no good. Rebound to Joseph. Here comes Rodriguez. Over in the corner to Carter and out to Edwards. Rodriguez, he'll put up the three. Off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound, Johnson. Head to man. And he has it taken away, knocked away, but Camp recovers, air ball. Five 
Malo, no good. And that is the half. So after one half of play, Morris is up 39-31 as they uh, actually camp led to about the halfway point, and then Morris put it on courtesy of threes. Yeah, a lot of threes. We know that they have that capability um, um, with the majority of their players on their team. Um, so that was kind of the reason why they took that lead. So we are going to take a break, but don't go anywhere. We've got lots of great information about Montgomery College ahead. And then we'll be back with the second half. You're watching NJCAA Basketball on MCTV. define Montgomery College? That's the wrong question. It's not how it's defined, it's who defines it. This is a turning point. It's a moment to look to the future and reify your purpose. MC is defined by those who put in the work. From early mornings to late nights, from the classroom to the workplace, with their family, their teammates, and when no one is watching. When our students declare to the world, I am MC, they stand tall. Backed by a thousand experiences that have shaped them along the way. And alongside those who have walked the path with them. There may have been moments of doubt when you were afraid by too much responsibility. Some of you have changed majors and found new inspiration. Through it, you have found the courage to surmount obstacles. If you are the first in your family to graduate, please stand up and say, I am MC. If you earn a high school diploma and a college degree this spring, if you speak more than one language, if you are older than 50 years old, a military service member, an honor student, if you are a parent or a member of the Montgomery College graduating class, please stand up and say, I am FC. Those who embody our spirit don't just graduate and move on. Rather, they continue to represent us as the designers of change and the leaders that they've been the entire time. We don't just begin to be inspired by them after graduation. It's that in our eyes, they've been inspiring us every step of the way. dreams into reality in the lab with the formula in chemistry the memories spark and motivate and make the industry shake we put the balls in the place i'm talking one one chance at best yes yeah it's one all one shot now the future is yours go I'm Jordan. Um, 
I am a second year in their early college program. I am currently majoring in elementary education and special education at the Rockville campus. Hello, my name is Paulo Rivero. I am a second year student at the Montgomery College Early College Biotechnology Program. My name is Krushi Savla and I was in the Early College Program. I completed the nursing program at Montgomery College and I graduated in spring of 2022. I, I found high school to be sometimes a bit challenging. It really depends on what courses you take. I wanted to challenge myself academically more. Um, I've always um, knew that I wanted to have my diploma in something else, like going into high school. So the early college program stuck out to me the most because the degree at the end. The most like fascinating thing about it was it had the career pathway that I wanted to choose regardless. So that really pulled me to it saying, you know, if this is what I want to do for my whole life, then why not start early? When I came on campus, I was like, what did I get myself into? Like, it was like, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> My MC schedule is, I would say, is more flexible than high school. You don't have to spend 45 minute periods in one class. In high school, you know, we have seven classes in the day. They're all only 50 minutes. Then you come to college, you don't have all your classes every day. There is a lot of growth in the first two semesters uh, that I've gone through. I think that's something that you would discover. You realize that, oh, going to a professor's office hours it's really helpful, it's a very good tool. I was very nervous as to how I'm gonna keep up the pace, but also excited to meet other people that you know are doing the same thing as me, making new friends and just experiencing college. So it's helpful, you know, having that bond where we all kind of stuck together, we all knew what we all were feeling within each other. So it was that sort of empathy that, you know, we all shared where we all understood what we all are feeling. I kind of feel like I have a head start because I did two years in college before I did, went into a four year. I'm more responsible for myself. and I don't have like reminders to like go to class, do your homework. It's like I have to do it. I didn't like how with AP classes, if you don't pass the final exam, you wouldn't get the credit. Um, with the early college program, when I graduate in 2023, next year, I will have more than a credit. I will have a degree, and I feel like that will help me when I apply to a four-year, more than an AP class. Walking across the stage, like, it's surreal, I will say. Even for me, it's like at, you know, 18, 19 years old with an associate's degree, I can step out and get into my career as, like, a dream like you know it doesn't even feel real sometimes and it really shows that there is no age limit at what you can do things i would recommend this program i feel like it's going to be like really rewarding like i get to walk not once but twice um i have a college degree i'm going to also have a diploma it's going to be like a feeling that like wow like i did it but it's not that you can't do it, it's what's stopping you from doing it. If you want to do it, I believe you truly can do it because you have more than enough resources to get you through it. So my advice to any new students that are thinking of going to this program is to use your resources to be committed and to persevere through this. Because once you have a, a good attitude towards this, you're unstoppable.
from the beginning. That's what I'm talking about. From the beginning. Career success starts at Montgomery College. At MC, you can prepare for a rewarding career in these exciting fields. And if your goal is earning a bachelor's degree, starting at MC is a smart choice. MC's award-winning team supports you every step of the way with advising, tutoring, and career preparation to help you make your move. Join the thousands that are getting the education they need to succeed at Montgomery College. You on my mind a lot, don't need no time, watch. I don't know how I got you in my pocket spot. Yeah, this bay, miss you every day. You like my oxygen, make it seem like the barging down. Got my heart no barging in, from the bed to the floor to the couch. Might wake the neighbors up. Break you in and break you out. In the end, we gon' make a child. Then we gon' hit the show. Part two. Break you in then. Employers are looking for licensed physical therapy assistants. MC has a two-year degree program for jobs in this career. PT assistants work with people of all ages recovering from all injuries. You could be working at a hospital, a large corporation, a private practice, a nursing home. The list is long. And in this area, the average pay is good. Learn more about becoming a physical therapy assistant and how MC can help you get there. And welcome back to the Rockville campus of Montgomery College. Michael Brown alongside my partner, Andre Anderson, and we are getting set for the second half of the second game of the second day of the <laughs> Montgomery College uh, tip-off tournament. And uh, as you can see from the scoreboard, Morris is on top of Paul Camp 39-31. Leading scorers for Morris are Samir Jordan with 13 and number 23, Henry Kazunmu with seven for Paul Kemp. The leading scorer is number 14, James Barlow. And second in scoring is number zero, Kylan Mann. He has seven. Barlow with 10, Mann with seven. And we are underway, Morris with the ball. It's a good first half. 
A lot of fouls, however. Seems to be a trend in this tournament. Yeah, it does. Now, Camp led uh, in the early going to about the 10, 11 minute mark, and then Morris just took the lead back with the help of some threes. They, they hit some threes, uh, Samir Martin, um, uh, who is the, uh, I'm sorry, Samir Jordan, who is the uh, leading scorer, really got him going with some threes. And there's Hazir Lee, throws one up. Thought he was fouled, no call, no basket. Here comes Camp. And we are off to a flying start. <laughs> And Hazir Lee was just a little bit out of control there. Yeah, but this has been a very quick start. Up and down, up and down. No real, you know, plays or set, you know, plays have been called. It's just basically fast break back and forth. Well, one thing is, uh, is very good to see, and that's uh, for Morris, number 12, uh, Daniel uh, Orobier is back out there. We were a little concerned. He... Uh, had a collision under the bucket, fell and hit his head. Um, but he's back out there, so apparently he's okay. It's always a good sign. So let's uh, set the lineups for both teams. For camp, we've got uh, Barlow is back out there. Number 11, Samaj Jordan. Number zero, Kylan Mann. Number one, Tavion McRae. And number five, Kamari Artis. For Morris, number one, Samir Jordan. Number 23, Henry Kazunmu. Number five, Jonathan Edwards. Number 12, Daniel Oravier. And number four, Hazir Lee. And Kamir Artis, Kamari Artis rather, gets his own rebound and puts it back in. So Camp has come out here and cut the lead immediately to four. And there's the first foul of the second half. And the foul is on number 11, Samaj Moore, and that'll put uh, Kazunmu on the foul line. Kazunmu had a good first half, seven points. Played some good defense. Did have a tech called on him. And he makes second. Moore luck. tries the uh, reverse, no good. But Kemp gets it back. Samaj Moore off the iron, no good. McRae to Barlow, back to McRae for three. Barlow gets, his, gets the rebound, goes up strong. And he's fouled by Oravier. That'll put uh, Barlow on the line. The big guy, six foot eight, just a freshman. Insane. And he misses the first. And makes the second.
This is a rare sight. They're walking the ball up the court. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brandon Rodriguez is in for Morris. Samir Jordan tries to drive, has it knocked away by McCoy, McCray. Tavion McCray. Good look at Samir Jordan. Inbounding is Rodriguez. Out to Edwards. Drives, stops, shoots. No good. Barlow with the very difficult rebound. And not sure what the call was. Apparently it's a clock issue. So they will inbound it again. And Tavion McCray is going to bring it up. And there's a travel. Turnover. The Morris Titans have led since midway through the first half. They've, had, they've led by as many as 12. Currently up by five. It's a good chance right here for Morris to, you know, add to the lead with the three. There's the three and Rodriguez. There he goes. You don't want to leave that guy open. No, no, no. He no. will put it up there. And he's had great success this weekend with the three ball. Man. Oh, Samaj Jordan got trapped in the corner. Here's Rodriguez. The block. Oh, great block right. there by Barlow, but a foul. Foul was on Johnson. And that puts uh, Kazunmu on the foul line. And he makes the first. And makes them both. Full court pressure by Morris. Man, there's a turnover. Rodriguez. And that's two quick, two quick points. Now we've got, not sure what this is about. I'm not sure either. Well, I think, I think the call was that uh, Rodriguez knocked the hand, the ball out of the hands of the inbounder before he had inbounded it. So uh, he was basically reaching into out of bounds territory to oh, yeah. knock the ball out of his hand. That's a foul. Yep. And that's a foul on a three as uh, Edwards fouls. Uh, Ramon Green, who is now in for uh, camp. And he'll have three shots. Yeah, these are critical free throws. Yeah, this uh, this would cut the lead. It will actually could put the put. Uh, <laughs> makes the first definitely uh, they need to, they need these points, obviously. Stating the obvious. But they cannot let Morris get away. As we saw last night, the Raptors dug themselves a rather deep hole and just couldn't yep. climb out of it. Yeah. And there's always this, like, uh, remember yesterday we were talking about, like, a threshold. Like, 
for some reason, teams always seem to get to, you know, the six, five, three, whatever, you know, deficit that they can't seem to cross. Right. And it's, for some reason, it's very difficult to do that. Obviously, you have to score, then stop the opponent. Um, so, obviously, the bigger the lead is, it's the harder to kind of creep back in, creep back in. Yeah, and you, you don't want to let it get away. You're approaching midway point in the first half. I always look at a at the 10, I'm sorry, in the second half, I always look at the 10 minute mark as a as a real crucial point. Yeah. And you want to make it, you want to, if you're trailing, you want that lead under 10. Yeah. When you hit that 10 minute mark. Otherwise, you, you just, you really have a hole to dig out of. So Morris, Morris is very aware of that, uh, which is why they're putting pressure on. They're making camp work for every possession, every dribble. And we have uh, we have two technical fouls, so we have yeah, uh, double take. And the official still trying to clarify things. So we have competing technicals, it appears. All right, so we have a technical on Brandon Rodriguez for Morris, who we see right there. And then we also have a technical on Kamari Artis for Paul Camp. So those two technicals cancel each other out. Nobody shoots. That's a very rare situation, but clearly uh, a lot of pushing and shoving, a lot of talking. It's hard to, it's hard to know whether it was the pushing and uh, shoving or the chitter chatter. <laughs> Barlow digs it out of there, gets it to Mann. He's trapped, gets it back to Barlow. They break the timeline. Wow. And Jalen Duckett buries the three. That was a crucial three-pointer because now they're below 10-point deficit. They got it down to eight. And they just want to keep chipping away if they can. And there's a foul on Ramon Green out front. He fouls uh, Kazunmu. There you saw the uh, great look at the three from Duckett. Azir Green inbounding it. Gets it to Kazunmu. Back to over the bar. And we've got bodies on the floor again. And this game has really turned physical. Yeah. And uh, the officials have their work cut out for them right now. There's a lot of uh, a lot of high energy, shall we say. Yeah, let's, you know, see what the refs uh, do with this call. But I have an idea what out of it. What would you advise? Oh, uh, you know, unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah. Leave it at that. Oh, we'll get the uh, angle. How about we all decide to. Oh, uh, yeah, we had a take down there. Oh. Oh, oh, we got a punch from, look like Green may have. I wonder if we can see that again. 
Yeah, I saw a Karate Kid. Yeah, move it looked in there. Uh, looked to me like uh, a little too much contact. Here we go. Now, Kazunu put him in a uh, a headlock or something similar. Oui. And then Green retaliated. So let's see what the uh, texts are being called. So from my vantage point, it may have started, well, it was just a lot of contact. They got wrapped up. It's hard to really tell who started it, but both those guys, those are the two guys involved. Yeah. That much is for sure. And head coach uh, Franklin Chapman is getting his two cents worth in with uh, the officials. And to the free throw line is uh, Tavion McCray. I'm sorry, Samir Jordan, he missed the first one. Second one, he missed them both. Normally flawless from the foul line. So apparently the tech is on green. Just the one tech. I'm not sure they got that one right. Yeah. However, I will say this. If they had called a tech on Kazuno, he would not be in the ball game right now because that would be his second of the game. Yep. That's actually a very good point. Yeah. Maybe it was a reason why or I kind of doubt that. No. Uh, but who knows? But, yeah, it would have been his second technical. Edwards to Kazuno. He play, he's a very physical player. Oh, wow. Just taken away there by uh, Barlow. Up no good. Kazunu muscles in for the rebound. And the foul is going to be on Kazuno. And all of a sudden, we've got... Uh, we got quite a physical basketball game here. Yeah. We'll see how the refs, uh, you know, decide to handle this one. Yeah, because it's uh, it it is in danger of getting out of hand. <laughs> Tempers, emotion. Let's put it this way: emotions are running high. Two very good teams. Two athletic teams, physical teams, scores under a 10 point, uh, or Titans are up 10 po or eight points, excuse me, uh, to the Hurricanes. So I think, uh, you know, these teams want to go 4 0. Yeah, they both want to be 4 0 in the worst way. And for a November basketball game, it, ha it almost has the feeling of a February basketball yeah. game. Yeah. Second one is good. Dalen Duckett on the line. And it's good. Lead is down to six. Jordan. Lee. Back to Jordan from the corner for three. Off the mark. Edwards. Kazunu blocked by Barlow. Edwards. Boy, he's very active out there. He is. That was a, a big rebound and put back. Oof. And that's an offensive foul on Ramon Green. Not only did he get the uh, foul called on him, but he hit the deck hard. And he's up. Man. I don't know how they do it. Oh, yeah, he hit the deck hard. Both he and Hazir Lee. Man. 
This is one intense game. Very low scoring, however. Neither team shooting very well. Three ball. Lee off the back iron. Rebound to Artis. Johnson, duck it off the iron. Johnson, no good. Tip in is good. Big tip in by Barlow. Six point lead. This is as close as they've been since the first half. And there's the replay. All right, so coming up after this game, we've got uh, the host, Montgomery College Raptors women's team, and they will be taking on the uh, Monroe College from Bronx, New York. Uh, Monroe, of course, won yesterday over Frederick. The Raptors lost to Nova, so the Raptors would really, really, really want to get a win today. Oh, yeah. And, of course, Monroe would like to get out of here unscathed. So that's coming up 20 minutes after this one. And then 20 minutes after that one, we've got the uh, MC Raptors men's team taking on the Owls from Union College in New Jersey. Uh, Union, actually both of these teams lost yesterday. Oh yeah. U, uh, Union lost to Paul Camp. The Raptors lost a tight one to, uh, to Morris. So, Neither of those teams, of course, wants to go winless for the weekend. And the Raptors are going to be looking for their first win of the season. So the last thing they want to do is start off the campaign 0-4. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Raptors come out really strong in this game and also with a lot of energy. Yeah, they're going to need it because we were very impressed with Union yesterday. Yeah. Despite the fact that Union lost, uh, they well, both both teams that lost yesterday, both the Raptors and, and the Owls from Union, they both played hard, good basketball, but they just came out on the short end of the stick. So the lead is six. So again, those are coming up 20 minutes after this one. Raptors women's team takes on Monroe. And then 20 minutes after that one, the Raptors men's team will close out the tournament, taking on Union College from New Jersey. Rebound to Barlow. He's played just about every minute today. Yeah, I was going to say, he hasn't really, has he come out at all? I don't believe so. Compared to yesterday where he was actually out for a uh, significant part of the uh, second half. And um, in a good chunk of the first. Yeah. I, I had the, the, the feeling that he was not feeling well yesterday. Oh, that's a good feeling. Yeah. To have. Because well, not to have, I actually. saw him coughing on the sidelines quite a bit. Um, so, again, I'm an amateur doctor. <laughs> and I'm also not affiliated with the team. So, I don't know anything about it. So it could have been something else completely. But my amateur sleuthing said it could possibly be that he's a bit under the weather. But, Seems like uh, he's doing a little bit better today. I would say he made a, a very rapid recovery. You know what I wonder? If he ended up getting one of these uh, chakra, uh, uh, you know, cleansings, and it might have helped. You know what? You might be on to something because – I'm I'm noticing something different about Barlow today, and it could be that his aura was cleansed overnight. There's Mann. Battles through the wow. lane. Man, he earned that bucket. Yeah, tough bucket. Wow. And he cuts it to three. This is the closest 
these two teams have been since the first half. Morris led by eight at the break. Up and off the back of the rim. There's Mann, little one-man press. Pull up, saw that coming. Yep. And there, Artis drains the three. Saw that coming. And ties it up. Kamari Artis. Quite a comeback by Paul Camp in a very, very short amount of time. They were down by eight three minutes ago. Yep, just like that. I mean, it doesn't take much to, you know, cut into the lead. A uh, couple threes, 36 points right there. One more stop at a field goal. That's two points, eight points, just like that. Man had that uh, tough drive down the lane. So Paul Camp really showed us a lot. Again, this is a team that is competing in the NJCAA this year for the first time. And uh, let me tell you, the NCAA or the NJCAA is not easy. No, not at all. If it was, I'd be playing. And that's <laughs> how you definitely know it'd be super easy. But it's not at all. Because many, many, many players, uh, and we know that from uh, Montgomery College for sure, many, many, many players have gone on to four-year schools. Yep. Have gone on to play professionally uh, overseas. Yep. Uh, in Europe and Asia and uh, the Middle East. And um, it's a great stepping stone for a lot of players who may be coming out of high school, didn't, uh, the, the schools they were interested in weren't interested in them at that time. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you, uh, and it's a great, it's a great way to start your college career to go to a community college, get all your basic classes done for an affordable price, and then hopefully you get a scholarship to a four-year school. Sounds like the perfect path to me. It really is. So Morris goes up by two. And we're getting down to crunch time now. There's Mann. Rebound to or Bier. Ruiz back in. There's Kazunmu. He's off the mark. And Mann brings it up for Paul Camp. Moving the ball around. Ooh, look at Ooh, foul. Yep. Johnson tripped. And that foul's going to be on Jagger Ruiz. Yep, stuck the leg out there. And that put number 13, Bobby Johnson, on the foul line. 6-2 freshman. Makes the first. Cuts the lead to one. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was all about. Oh, substitution. So Brandon Rodriguez comes in for Zaire Carter. Off the rim and out. So he can't he can't tie it. 
And here comes Rodriguez. Gets it to Ruiz inside to Kazumu. Ooh. Oh, the follow. Not in. And Barlow comes up with it. Man. Three ball. There's the five. Oh, Ooh, in and out. But what a, a great rebound. rebound by Barlow. <laughs> Couldn't get it to go, though. And Barlow is tied up by Kazunmu. Possession arrow is for camp. So they will retain possession and they'll inbound it. Artist inbounds it to man. He drives, dishes. Great pass. Nice pass to Bobby Johnson. Cross court pass. Rodriguez for three off the back of the rim. Edwards, no good. Rebound, Duckett. We're under seven minutes now. Camp with a chance to take the lead. Be their first lead since midway through the first half. Mark Mann drives. And there's a whistle. And man is fouled. He'll go to the foul line. Foul is on Kasunmu, and he's going to take a seat. He's fouled out of the game. So that is the last we're going to see of number 23, Henry Kasunmu. That is a loss for Morris. Yeah, he's been a formidable force down low. Um, and he's been doing a great job going against Barlow. He's been in the mix of everything. Second shot is good. So Paul Camp now with a three-point lead. Six and a half minutes to go. Ruiz. Edwards. Ooh, what a block by Barlow. <laughs> he almost knocked that one to Silver Spring. <laughs> So that's a stop for Camp. That's a big stop. They can push this lead to five or six here. Johnson takes it to the hoop and scores. Five point lead for Camp. Under six to go. Ruiz. Jordan misses from the corner. Rebound to Mann, and he is fouled. The clutch rebound by Kylan Mann, and boy, he paid some price for it. He did, he did. But just like that, though. He's smiling. <laughs> Camp is up. Yeah, just like that, Camp has now grown the lead to five, and Samir Jordan has fouled out for Morris. So they have lost two key players in the last minute. Yeah, and there's still a lot of time left in this game. Yeah. And Mann makes the first. Timeout. There's some smiles on that camp bench right now. A little early for celebration. Lots of time left. But they have built a six-point lead. We talked about that 10-minute mark. They got it down to, 
they were only trailing by a couple when they hit the 10 minute mark. Yep. And then quickly uh, thereafter took the lead and they just sort of slowly built it. So again, want to remind you, 20 minutes after the conclusion of this game, we've got the Montgomery College women's team taking on the Mustangs from Monroe College out of New York. That should be an interesting game. It should be, and it will be. Got to see if the Raptors can bounce back from last night's disappointing loss. Yeah. They really, really struggled from both the foul line uh -huh. and behind the arc. They did. They picked up the three-point shots actually a little bit towards the end of the game. Towards the end. So hopefully they can transition and, and move that from that game to the next game. Yeah, because they started – and uh, sometimes that happens. Yeah. You know, shooters can be – are streaky. Yeah. Not can be. They are. Yeah. And uh, both of the Luan Gonzalez sisters, who yes. are known for their three-point shooting, uh -huh. started the game cold uh, yesterday for the Raptors. They did. But they came on in the second half, yep. particularly Izzy. Yeah, she, she really did. She's so, one of the staples of that team, too. So, But they lost that game on the foul line. Um, if they had hit a decent percentage, say 60% of their foul shots, they would have won the game. Yeah. Man misses the first front end of the uh, a one on one, a one on one. So that's not what they wanted. Gives more some life. Edwards. Oh, nice move there by Laura Bier. They don't run the offense through him, but he can be effective around the basket. His specialty is defense. At least from where we can. Uh, but we see, yeah. Yeah. Every possession big. Here's Barlow. Wow. Whoa. That was a dunk, folks. Yeah, when he's playing like that, he can't be stopped. No. And boy, he's feeling it right now. Here we go. Here's the dunk. <laughs> It is an exciting play. Oh, yeah. One time I had a dream that I dunked. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, never mind. Watch out now, guys. Forget that dream. Let's let's stick to reality, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, let's calm down. All right. So, Camp now with a six-point lead. This is their biggest lead since very early in the game. They've just kept battling. So Brandon Rodriguez will inbound it. Gets it to Ruiz. And he's fouled by Bobby Johnson. Going for the steal, and he fouled him. And that will put Jagger Ruiz on the foul line for Morris. Let's see if he can get some satisfaction from that foul line. Because otherwise he might need to give me some shelter. <laughs> Ooh, off the back of the rim, no good. That's a big miss on the front end of a one and one. Johnson. Ooh. Oh my goodness, a circuit shot from Kamari Artis. Wow. And that pushes the lead to eight, and he'll go to the line with a chance to make it a nine-point hurricane lead. Off the back of the iron. All of a sudden, both teams are a little cold on the, from the foul line at a very key point. Oh, 
Rodriguez with the triple. He's never afraid to shoot the three. He's never met a three that he didn't like. He cuts that lead to five. Barlow loses it. Carter. Ruiz. See what the call is. Looks like they're going to call it a block and not a charge. So that'll put uh, Ruiz on the line. That's nine team fouls now on camp. Three-point lead. How quickly? That's the, that's the power of the three. It is. How quickly they cut into this lead. And then also with the free throws because of the double bonus. Yeah. And, you know, one and one. You cut to the lead real quick with those as well. Yes, you can. And there's still a lot of time. As we saw yesterday in just about every game, three minutes is a lifetime. Johnson off the rim, no good. That was a uh, no violation there. And Edwards just lost control. Trying one of his patented slashing moves and just lost control of the basketball. And that's a big turnover. Under three minutes now. Martin, I'm sorry, man. Battles for the ball, and it's going to stay with Paul Camp. Anthony Obrey, the head coach of uh, Morris, does not agree. <laughs> He's pleading his case. My guess is it'll be to no avail. <laughs> I've never seen a ref change his call. Uh, very, very rarely. And it's only generally only happens after a conference between the officials. Exactly. There, I don't. I don't think I've ever seen an arguing coach. The guy, the, the ref, go. You know what? You make a good point there. <laughs> that was not a foul. You know the logic you used <laughs> was so good that I'm going to change the call. Yeah. How can I deny that logic? <laughs> All right. Two forty-nine to go. It's still anybody's ball game. Got very quiet in the gym all of a sudden. Yeah, I know. I was like, wait, <laughs> what's going on? It's almost weird. Like, what, what did I miss? <laughs> Morris coach is still not happy about that out of bounds call. So Paul Camp with the ball. Three point lead. Under three minutes to go. And they are going to work some clock. Forces the shot up. Johnson Ooh, has his stuff back in his face. Ahead to Edwards, who has it knocked away by uh, Duckett. But they called a foul on him. And that'll put Jonathan Edwards on the foul line. Excellent. Great hustle there by uh, Jalen Duckett. But, yeah, he got him. So they're both teams now in the double bonus. He makes the first. So every trip to the foul line from here on out will be a two-shot attempt. And I'm looking over at the Morris bench, and I see Hazir Lee has a wrap and an ice bag on his knee. Hopefully that's nothing serious. Yeah. He's a really exciting player. 
but it doesn't look good. He's got a crutch as well. Hopefully it's uh, nothing serious. Yeah, for crossing area. As you and I know, the knee is, <clears throat> that's a tough place to have an injury. Don't even like talking about it. I don't either. However, there's a constant reminder. Yeah. <laughs> Every day I wake up, yep. just function during life. My 30-year-old right knee is, uh, feels a lot older than that. Apparently there's some moisture on the floor and one of the MC soccer players who is uh, a student worker at the college uh, doing his best to get it up. Ooh, oh my goodness. Wow. Ruiz hit our camera guy. Hopefully everybody's all right there. And that's going to be a foul on Barlow. And all of a sudden, it's a one-point game, and Mann has a chance. I'm sorry, uh, Edwards has a chance to tie it up with two minutes to go. Jonathan Edwards, who is the, the leading scorer on the Morris team. And he makes the first. Now he can put him ahead. So Morris has fought back to tie it. And they are in front. 67-66, two minutes to go. Having a little trouble against this pressure. They got to get it across, they do. Barlow to man. Johnson. Off the iron, no good. Rebound to Orbier. There's Edwards. Oh, big block by Barlow. Barlow has had a passel of blocks today. At That's least an official stat, by the way. Passel of blocks. Passel of blocks. Yes. Okay. That's a new stat I just learned about. Well, it's less than a bushel. Oh, okay. 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 It's less than a peck. Less than a peck, less than a bushel. Yeah, but it's a passel. Okay. Ruiz with the drive and kick. Edwards from the corner, in and out, no good. 122 to go, camp down by one. A lot of contact there, no call. Good no call as far as I'm concerned. Off the iron, no good. Gets his own rebound. Artis to Barlow, and Barlow is fouled by Orbier. And that'll put Barlow on line. He has struggled from the line this afternoon. He has. It would be very crucial for him to at least knock down one to tie the game up. Absolutely. And there he does. Go. He'll have another and a chance to tie it up. Scoring table. <laughs> and Orbier takes a seat. <clears throat> oh, they finally changed the score. A lot of uh Oh, okay. People. That was the problem. Yeah, I a lot thought, of people. I uh, thought he had tied it up. Yeah. Talking about that. 
So now they've got the lead. Paul Camp back out in front as uh, Barlow sinks them both. I'm like, do, do my eyes play tricks on me? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Barlow with another block. I want to tell you, Barlow is having a block party. I feel like he'd be good at volleyball. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine <laughs> him spiking the ball? And he, can, he, he gets up quickly. He does. And he has the power from these blocks. Boom. There he is. One spike. Next spike. Boom. Boom. No libero is going to be able to. You know, <laughs> dig that out. No. I learned that term like a month ago. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you used it like you've known it your entire life. Oh, I studied. Yeah. I did my homework. Bar yeah, Barlow is a quick leaper and, um, and, and, and long arms. He's got all the attributes. And he missed the second. So we are tied with 40 seconds on the clock. Camp with the basketball. Man. Artis. 25 seconds. Artis drives, puts it up, and in. What a layup. Incredible. Big time bucket. Big time bucket by Kamari Artis. Timeout's called. 6 1 freshman. He did that like he'd been doing it his entire life. And now, all right, there's not a timeout. I thought we had a timeout on the floor. Ruiz wants the ball. Yeah. And now there is a timeout on the floor. So, <laughs> of course we had an issue with that. Seems to always be some weird technical issue towards uh, the end of the games. Yep. So it's a full timeout. Good look at Kamari Artis. Just a sweet little drive. Made it look easy. But that's a big time gutsy shot. Don't forget, coming up 20 minutes after this one, the Raptors women's team take on the Mustangs from Monroe College. That'll start about 20 minutes after the conclusion of this game. That should be a good one. 21 seconds on the game clock. And two-point lead for Paul Camp. Morris with the ball. Rodriguez, what's the call? And they call a foul on Artis. As he tripped uh, Rodriguez. Rodriguez was driving to the hoop. Rodriguez has been solid from the line today. Let's. Let's hope we don't jinx him. He can't hear me. <laughs> Makes the first. One point game. Big free throw. He makes them both. We're tied with 11 seconds to go. Oh. oh, and there is a offensive foul on Duckett as he was trying to get position for the inbounds pass, and he knocked over Jagger Ruiz. So those are free throws, right? So he will go to the line. Even though it's an offensive foul, he'll be shooting. 
So with 11 seconds on the clock. As uh, Jalen Duckett just got a little aggressive trying to get open yeah. uh, for the inbounds pass as uh, Morris had put on the press. They had a lot of pressure. Not so much on the on the inbounder, but on the receivers, the potential receivers, which is, in my opinion, a, a really excellent way to uh, defend on an inbound. Cover the guys that are going to catch it. Yeah. So this is going to be interesting. 11.1 left. 11.1 left. He'll be going to the line. It'll be Ruiz. Yep, here he comes. And we'll see what he's got in his veins, whether it's ice water or what. <laughs> Something tells me he's been here before. Oh, it's no oh, no that is not a shooting foul. Oh, uh, okay. Another timeout. Checking in is number 20 for uh, Morris, Matthew Mancini. I don't believe we've seen him the entire weekend. No, we definitely have not. Also checking in number 33, David Joseph. He's played uh, limited minutes today. But, you know, you've got Hazir Lee on the bench with an ice pack on his knee. You've got Samir Jordan who has fouled out. And you've got uh, Daniel or of Vier who has fouled out for Morris. So they are not available. And Kazunmu has also fouled out. So another inbound situation and inbounding is, no, the, it, the ball, I'm sorry, I am all screwed up folks. I want to apologize, the ball is Morris was inbounding, but they didn't get it in in time. No, I'm sorry. It's a timeout. They called a timeout just before they ran out of time. Yeah. So Morris will be inbounding under their basket. With... 11.1 seconds to go. We've been stuck on 11.1 seconds for more than 11.1 seconds. Uh, way more. Again, that was a, a violation on Morris. So Paul Camp now will be inbounding. And they've got to go the length of the floor. So yours truly is uh, all far missed. Quick timeout. And they'll have time to set up some kind of a, uh, a three or a jumper most likely. I mean, to be honest, if they can just go to the paint, you know, try to get a foul, make well, some free Well, that's throws. true, too. You've got basically six seconds. Yeah, and, like, they're tied, so they just want to get points on the board because there's no guarantee that um, that Morris is going to score if they go back down the court. No. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not sure there's so, enough time. Yeah. Um, unless they intercept the inbounds. Very true. Intercept the inbounds, yeah. then they have an opportunity. Or there's another violation. Right. What Camp is going to try to do is get a, a 
successfully complete a quick inbounds pass and get the best look they can get. And let's see who they pick for that look. That'll be uh, very interesting. Kylan Mann is going to inbound it. Into the backcourt. Artis. He's got to hurry. And we're going to overtime. And we are going to overtime, folks. Tied at 70. As Camp just couldn't get off the shot, Artis tried that same move that he used uh, just a minute or two earlier on the layup. Yep. And uh, this time it was better defended. They knocked the ball loose. And um, our, uh, Barlow tried to pick it up, but clock ran out. Well, this would be a good one. <sighs> yeah. And I know, Andre, you are particularly excited because you told me this morning, I just can't get enough basketball. Yeah. So you yep. get some bonus basketball here, buddy. Yeah, right? My wish came true, huh? Yep. Wow. Look at that. See, that's what happens when you're a good boy, you know, you're a good guy. Well, in that case. You know, you hold doors for women. Well. You know, I've seen you put your coat over mud puddles. I, I do that. You know, yep. you say please and thank you. All the time. Uh, you're very polite. Appreciate that. Yes. So We can keep it going, too. You know, That's true. I could. Uh, anything else you've noticed that I've done to me, you know, spectacularly? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. You're great uh, as a partner. In Appreciate the booth. that. Yep. Great you as a as partner well. in the booth. So, really enjoying this. You never know. This could go to double overtime. Oh, I don't think the people in the truck want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and frankly, the, the two teams that are following, they don't want to hear it either because they're ready to play. Yeah, that's very true. Ruiz. A nice dish to uh, David Joseph for the easy bucket. So the Raptors women's team sitting right, right behind us. They are ready to get out there. Three ball. And nothing doing. Now, the, one of the key factors here is how many of the Morris Titans are unavailable to play in this overtime. Yeah, seriously. Because of injury and and um, and for uh, foul situations. Yeah, they, you don't have many people left that can actually go into the game, so they better hope that no one else really fouls up. Yeah. So right now they have um, David Joseph out there. They've got Jonathan Edwards out there, Jagger Ruiz, uh, Zaire Carter, and Brandon Rodriguez for camp. Um, you've got on the foul line right now, number three, Ramon Green. And you also have uh, number 10, Jalen Duckett, number zero, Kylan Mann. 14, James Barlow, and five, Kamari Artis. And Shamaj, uh, Shamaj Mora has just checked in for Ramon Green. Ramon Green shot the foul shot, made it, and uh, cut the lead to one. But he takes a quick seat, and Shamaj Green is in now. And there's going to be a foul, and it, that is going to be on... Number 10, Duckett. And that'll put uh, Edwards at the line. Makes the first. That gives Morris 
a two-point lead. Overtime is five minutes. And Duckett has fouled out. I thought that was the case. He just lingered a bit. And uh, Ramon Green comes back in. So both teams are shedding players. <laughs> We might have to jump in there. I, I I don't think they want me out there, but they may want you out there. Uh, I don't know about that. You got some life in those legs. Uh, yeah, but oh. Oh, there's a steal. Ruiz, nice pass. Oh, wisely brings it out. Didn't have the shot. Smart move there by Rodriguez. Work a little clock. They've got a three-point lead. Here's Edwards. I don't think he's ever heard the expression work a little clock. Yeah, no. Jonathan Edwards. Not at all. He loves slashing to the basket. Yeah, he's a fireball. More to Barlow. Oh, travel. we got to travel. That's outside of his comfort zone. Yep. His comfort zone are the, the, is that, uh, oh, say, eight-foot radius around the basket. More so of like, you know, pivoting and spinning that yeah, way rather no. than having to do some dribbles. Nope. But they had, oh, now we got another injury from Morris. Brandon Rod Rodriguez goes out with a, it looks like an ankle. So boy, they are really down now. And Osarusi Osagi has checked in for Morris. And Ruiz pushes that lead to seven. Despite all the losses by in personnel by Morris. They've had one, two, Three guys foul out and two guys lead by injury. It's a whole team right there that's out. Plus Five they've players. got a guy over there, Joel Mal Maldonado, who played quality minutes last night, who's not even in uniform. So he must have gotten hurt last night. So that, they're, they're down him as well. Oh, oh what a block by wow. Ruiz. Where did that come from? Oh. Jumping Jack Jagger Ruiz. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. <laughs> and there's a turnover by Ramon Green. And Morris will get the ball back, 2.24 to go. Jim starting to fill up as uh, the host Montgomery College playing in the next one. Again, it'll come up about 20 minutes after this one. MC women taking on the Mustangs from Monroe. And Edwards is fouled. Well, I'll tell you one thing, it's a good thing Morris has a deep bench. Yeah. Because they have needed just about every warm body they've got over there. Yeah, they would have to take volunteers if uh, they did not have a deep bench. And, you know, I'm sitting next to a guy who's still – you got any eligibility left? Uh, No. Oh, well. Well, at least – I have all of mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I have a year left. All right, so we'd have to get you cleared real quick. Yeah. Yeah. And is there like an age thing? Uh, no. I could be like the oldest. <laughs> yeah, I could be one of the oldest. That's a record. I could be. Again, I'll, I'll say I, I've got all mine. <laughs> well, <laughs> quarter However, three. I have zero hops. Okay. Um, 
uh, I don't think I could defend my grandmother. <laughs> and um, the speed is questionable. Well, what about the three-point ability? I mean, we can stick you in the corner. You know what I'm saying? Just have the hands out like this. Catch, shoot. I was the worst corner shooter ever <laughs> at my junior high. <laughs> I, I'm old enough to remember when they had junior highs, not middle schools. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. That's what they used to call it. <laughs> I'll confess something to you. My first basket was a peach basket with the bottom cut out. Really? And I am serious about that. Wow. Yeah. We couldn't afford, my dad couldn't afford to buy us a basket. So we put a nail up on the garage and hung a peach basket from it. Wow. Literally. <laughs> Well, you know, in soccer growing up as kids, you know, you, you got, you're not buying these goals and carrying them around. So right. you play in the park, and whoever has a backpack, one backpack here, one backpack <laughs> here, and that's the goal. There you go. You make do. Oh, yeah. And when you're a kid, man, you can, you can turn anything into a game. Oh, yeah. And that's stole. Oh, gotten back by artists. Whose ball? It's going to stay down at the uh, camp end. They need a bucket. They need a bucket in the worst way. Off the rim, no good. Rebound to Joseph. They've only, uh, Camp has only scored three points so far in this overtime. And as a result, they trail by five. Shot off, no good. Out to Ruiz. And they'll reset the offense. We're under a minute. And that's going to be a foul. That'll be a blocking foul on Ramon Green. And that'll put Ruiz back on the foul line. Ruiz has been a real factor. He has. He has. It's been a really good second half, really good overtime for him. He played very well last night in the second half, and he has really, uh, really played well today. He, boy, they needed him. Yep. With, uh, as I, you know, as we've mentioned, all the injuries and, and foul outs. So Antonio McGinnis has checked in for uh, camp. That's the first we've seen him this weekend. And has two shots. Ruiz missed the first. He missed them both. That gives an opportunity to camp. Oh, he turned it over. He turned it over. So Morris Osaji was getting ready to uh, inbound it. Timeout on the floor. 44 seconds to go. And Morris up by five. Been an excellent game. It really has. I don't think we're talking about setting any records for shooting percentage. No. However. No. But I would love to know how many blocks um, our friend uh, Mr. Barlow has. I would say about five. At least. At least. Yeah. At least. He's spectacular. He's fun to watch. Seems to have a good time out there, too. Yeah, I mean, I would also have a good time on the basketball court if I was 6'8 and could <laughs> jump out the gym and dunk, you know. I would, I would love being a basketball player. Yep, just patrol the lane and, and swat them away.
Edwards is fouled. And that was pretty close to a, uh, a flagrant. Maybe a little, could be that Edwards put a little bit of mustard on that uh, fall. Samar Moore, Samar Moore who, uh, who fouled him, or Samaj Moore who fouled him looked at him like, seriously dude? Yeah, like, I mean, I didn't pull you that hard. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hit you that hard, man. Last thing he wanted is a flagrant here. That would uh, that would not be good. So Edwards makes the first. That gives him a six-point lead. He makes this one. It's going to make it extremely difficult for Camp. Seven-point lead with 41 seconds. Should he make this one? And he does. Now Camp's got the work cut out for him. They need a three. They need a three and a steal. Barlow does exactly what he should do when he gets the ball. Yep, goes straight to the basket. Yep. So that possession took about 13 seconds. And cuts the lead to five. They will foul here, no doubt. Camp, I would think, is going to foul on the inbound. Yeah, they, they're going to probably do that and hope that free throws are missed. Maybe they foul. They're going to probably try to foul somebody who hasn't played a lot. So that could be Osaji. Um, it could be if Mancini's in there, he would be a possible target. We have some, uh, oh, it was the early shots of some of the men's uh, Raptors basketball team. Ah. And yeah, that's uh, some of the union team. They'll be uh, coming up. Uh, in the fourth game of the day, the Raptors men's team taking on the Owls from Union College out of New Jersey. That'll be our final game of the tournament. All right, so who are they going to pick on? Your Carter is out there, Osaji is out there, and they foul Joseph. So the big man will go to the line. David Joseph. The last trip to the line, he made them both. Yeah. So let's see what happens. And he goes the first. That was a crucial one. Yep. Puts that lead back up to six. A lot of chess pieces being moved around. Barlow and um, Tavion McCray come back in. They were out for defensive purposes. They, oh. Missed the second. McCray speeds it up. Three ball. Three ball from the oh. corner, and he sinks it, and he's fouled. Kamari Artis. He has hit some big shots today. Yes. And he has a chance to make this a two-point game. Twenty seconds to go, which is 
a whole lot of time. So here's Artis. Up and good. Two point game. 20.8 seconds to go. And Morris has got to get this ball in bounds. They do. And a quick foul. That'll put uh, Edwards back on the line. Last trip to the line, he made them both. He is the leading scorer on the team. Boy, he has not had much rest today, if any. And he plays at a high rate. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely going to get some good sleep tonight. All the running yesterday and today. Oh, my goodness. He's going to be sleeping on the Jersey Turnpike. Makes the first. Puts that lead back up to three. Makes the second. Four-point lead. Camp needs a quick bucket. Here's McCray. Oh, lost control. Edwards got it back. He's going to the basket. Out to Ruiz. Six seconds to go, and that is going to be the ball game. And Morris takes it in overtime. 83-79, and they move to 4-0 on the season now, and Paul Camp loses their first of the season as they fall to 3-1. Andre, heck of a ball game. Oh, my goodness. Overtime basketball. We get more than just regulation. That is exactly what we wanted. You know what I'm saying? A lot of high-flying uh, um, dunks and threes and great defense. This was a really good game. Excellent game, good effort by both teams. I tell you what, they gave this tournament uh, everything they had. Um, really, really excellent basketball. A lot of good athletes on both teams. Excellent coaching, so congratulations to both teams really for a great showing here in the tournament. And we're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere folks, because coming up in just 20 minutes now, the MC Raptors women's team We'll take on the Mustangs from Monroe College out of the Bronx, New York. For Andre Anderson, I'm Michael Brown. We'll be back in about 20 minutes. You're watching NJCAA College Basketball on MCTV. Get the speaker box loud, hitting that stuff till you hearing that sound.